broadcast live. I, I remember at some point, and even till now, um, yeah. Lockshin culture was literally everywhere in yeah. all the stores when you're growing up with us. Every yeah. single person that came into Lockshin culture, um, eventually, like I said, went to the sneakers. Everyone yeah. had Lockshin culture. How 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 were you getting it into the stores? Because I, it, it used to move like like big big numbers. Yeah. So how 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 were you moving it? Were you were you making it in China? Did you have a local guy doing a, a making your material? Like how were you getting it into the stores? So big, you know you know what I mean. It wasn't like a niche thing. When we started, it was niche. It's the uh, stuff that came from us from from our own hands. We started the business with seventeen rand fifty. Sure. We bought a ball of wool and some needles. That ball of wool made two hats. Those two hats Shirts. made five. 10, and so on and so on. Uh, There's a story that I like to tell around the crocheted hats when we started, right? So my mother, Chubby's grandmother, uh, who I started the business with, would also make hats. Uh, some of our aunts, cousins, became that production, you know, uh, mm -hmm. based on the demand. But the demand was so hectic that one of my aunts, Margaret, who used to stitch the label onto the crocheted hat, uh, introduced us to a woman that had friends that used to sell, you know, like in town, Jeppy Street, and you know, yeah. so they'd sell hats, ipoti, fruits, you know, uh, funny odd things like, mm -hmm. on, like on the side of the street. But most of the time, they just sit there and wait. So I saw an opportunity, like, while you're waiting, why don't you make hats? So at some stage, we had like 80 mamas making hats for us. Uh, so we drop them, we drop off the wool on a Monday. Thursday, we go back pick up what they've made over three days, heat them with more wool, and come back again on the Monday. So, so. And then it became, a, it became a cycle. Sure. And it just became a cycle until the end of our first winter, where no one's going to wear this thing, it's hot. Mm. Now we've created this brand, and it's like, actually, maybe, let's put it on a t-shirt. Mm. And then, oh, let's put it on a cap. Oh, let's just make stickers. And then people started taking stickers and putting them on skateboards, on their shoes. I'm like, if it's on a shoe, then let's make a shoe. Let's make a so shoe. So to answer your question, <laughs> uh, Brian Abrams, who had been in business for a long time in fashion, you know, really wanted us to build a foundation and then grow with us and show us like a, a new way of doing things. So for at least two years, I was the designer, slash model, driver, driver <laughs> delivery boy, <laughs> everything. everything else. To understand the, the, the business as, as a whole. And then he turned around, he was like, well, do you know that you can get people to do all of these things for you? And you just look at the business from a bird's eye view. Focus on the business. And then I was like, but how do you do that? He said, no, it's a licensed business. You, you give a specialist your brand, they help you, they create uh, a range, they put it into stores and what they make, they give you a percentage of that. Just like it's done in music. I never even right? knew that. So Brian Abrams taught us this valuable lesson of that most brands become brands because they license themselves to specialists who can create products that okay. are branded as such. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, when I learned that Nike doesn't own factories and that they're just a licensed brand, Coca-Cola, what is what, got what does it mean to license a brand? It means I've got intellectual property. I own this, I've created this logo and please help me reach the market. Now, the people that you'll be speaking to are people that are already distributors, that already have a market, which if you go back to the beginning of our conversation, for me, number one, you have to service a community, an yeah. individual. So, so here you must find people that already have- uh, That are already in the business. That are already in the business, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a classic example that I'll use, which is now, is that we are licensing the brand to create electronics. Ah. So we're going to be creating headphones, speakers. speakers. In fact, we've done that. Sure. Let me not talk in, 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 in future tense. Uh, we've already sold quite a lot. I won't go into the numbers now. But our feature phone did so well that you know, you've know you got a store like uh, ShopRite yeah. that really believes in, in, in the product we've created and also the value that it gives and the affordability of that as well. Mm. So in the next month or so, people will be able to get our entry-level um, feature phone from the likes of ShopRite, YouSave. Uh, we're working on um, a smartphone that will drop towards the end of the year, sure. uh, which will have apps and content and things like that as well. So it's a big year for you guys, celebrating 20 years. Look, at, at 20 years, I think you also have to show that you are coming of age in the sense that we're 21 next year. So 21 will be getting the key, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. But I think we need to kind of show the authority. I mean, uh, if, you're, if you're gonna refer to me as OG, I need to show why, yeah. you know what I mean? And yeah. I think it's time we show that we're bigger than fashion 
and for example, I really want to embrace the fourth industrial revolution because uh, uh, when I grew up, my room was my whole world. In my room, I had a TV, I had a phone, you know, you had a radio, mm. you know. Uh, nowadays, and I see it with my children, you know, the whole world is in the palm of their hand. Yeah, that's it. Which is actually a bad thing. I sometimes uh, feel like it's a bad thing because you find that these kids like, Havasa Bua, Havasa Gala, you know, they don't, they, they miss that essence of, 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 of being a human being. I mean, a lot of the time you sit at the table and everyone's on the phone and oh, I yeah. hate it. People don't know how to have conversations anymore. Oh, my, my children have made rules. I, when we're sitting at the table, phone's in the middle. Yeah, you know, that's the uh, only way. And I think, like, like with everything, it, 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 in moderation, but at the same time, there's nothing that we can do with how Things are digital changing. the world yeah. is going. And I think that's what the brand is trying to embrace in 20 years. Yeah. You know, before we never needed the internet to persuade people to wear our brand. Yeah. Now I need Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, which took us a while to get into. Yeah. You know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, if you, if you, you know, it's, for me, it's not about the tricks. Mm. It's actually understanding the basics, which I think we've been able to do in 20 years. So the future of Luxon culture looks Promising. Like a super global brand. Nice. Uh, we're launching in Los Angeles next year. Nice. Uh, we're launching our own stores. Nice. You know, we've got um, uh, a secret range that we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like at the heart of it is really to embrace the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I think I always say, you know, um, it's, it's, it's not always uh, the people that are in the forefront that are doing everything, guys. Um, that's why I've created the show. There's a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes. Um, I'm sure for a lot of people who are watching the show, they didn't know who you are. But um, once you start speaking, they get to understand and think, oh shit, um, maybe I should be friends with this guy. So um, that's what the show is about. Uh, OG, Hotman, thank you so much for being my very first guest. It's an honor. I know you're very busy, so thank you for taking time to come and chill with me. And um, shout out to all of you guys. I hope you guys have learned something from this episode. Please follow him on the socials. Where do they find you on the socials, Hotman? On Twitter, it's at DJ1D. DJ, number one, letter one D. D. Facebook, Wandin Zimande. Facebook, uh, the, the DJ page, also DJ Wandi. Yeah. On, on Instagram, it's One Digital. Number one, one Digital. One digital. Make sure you go check him out. Maybe you would like to know some more questions. I know he's always out there to help. I mean, for me to even be able to present like this was all from him. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough for that opportunity. So thank you very much. And I'm glad this episode was with you. So what we're going to do is because you're my very first guest, we're going to see how long you can stay on the board. And then um, everyone else that comes on the show will have to break your record. They'll break it. <laughs> I hope I don't break any let's, bones. Let's try it out. Yeah, I got you though. Yeah. That's actually it. <laughs> okay, cool. That's good enough. That's good enough. Guys, I'll see you guys next month. Speak to them in the park. Follow me on the socials. Use the hashtag. Uh, comment down at the bottom. Let us know what you think of the show. Who you'd like to see on the show. If it sucks, let us know. You'd be like, yo, this shit is whack, B. Let's make something else. You know, let's create something else. Let me know. This show is for us. Thank you so much. Away.